Thank you for supporting Honest News Network. Let's open up in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy, your goodness, your kindness to us. We thank you for helping us, Lord, to deliver your word to your people. We pray, Lord, that your people will hear your voice, that they will hear your voice knocking. They'll hear your words, Lord, calling them to that old rugged tree. Lord, we know that there are those, your people, that they try to get around the truth of your word. I pray, Lord, you help them to realize there is no way around the truth, but that we must go through the truth. We must pass through the truth to go to the Father, to inherit eternal life. There's no way around the truth, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you will bless and anoint, Lord, as we minister your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, only God could make death sweet. Only God can do that. There's nothing sweet about death. Amen? But how many know that God has removed the sting of death? Are you listening? How is it possible that death could be sweet? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 56. The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. How is it possible that through death, through death, that we could pass unto life? How's that possible? Only in Christ. Only in Christ can we pass from death unto life. There must be a death. Are you listening, folks? Now, when most people think of death, they think of a physical body dying. But how many know that not every one of us are going to die? We're not all going to sleep. We're not all going to die. Some of us are going to be caught up. Some will be caught up to God and to his throne. And some will be caught up in the middle of the air. But not all are going to die. Not all are going to go to sleep in Christ. Amen? Thanks, but thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory. How? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the door. We must enter in through him. Are you listening, folks? We're continuing in our series, Being Made Free from Sin. There must be a death to the body, to the self-life. 
to be free from sin, to be made free from sin. Romans chapter 6, verse 5. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Are you listening? The old man is crucified with him. The body of sin might be destroyed. Praise the Lord. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Did you hear that? How sweet God has made death. For he that is dead is freed from sin. There must be a death to the body of sin. There must be a death to the self-life. Amen. That old man of sin must die. Must die. Oh, blessed be his name. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. If we be dead with Christ. Are you listening? Oh, listen, brothers and sisters. How sweet the victory. How sweet the victory. No wonder it says in the book of Revelation, they love not their lives unto the death. They weren't afraid of death anymore. Are you listening? How many know the fear of death is bondage? Amen? Because of the fear of death, all their lifetime they were subject to bondage. How many know death has been conquered? In Christ Jesus. Amen. Death can't hold you and I. Any more than it could hold him. He tasted death for every man. So we wouldn't have to. Amen. We don't have to taste death. Brothers and sisters. Glory to the Lamb. He has made a way for us to pass through death. Amen. Some are going to be caught up in the middle of the air to meet the Lord in the air. And some, even before that, are going to be caught up to God and to his throne. And even as Enoch was not, for God took him. Are you listening? It's a great mystery. Great mystery. Oh, blessed be his name. Never die. Never die. I don't know about you folks, but I'm not looking for the grave. I'm not looking for the grave. I'm not looking for the undertaker. 
I'm looking for the upper taker. Praise God. Romans chapter 7, verse 4. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ. That you should be married to another. Are you listening? Married to another. Even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Amen. We are to be married to the living Christ, to the resurrected Christ. Amen, brothers and sisters. Dead to the law. Dead to the law. Because that old man is dead. That body of sin is dead. Crucified with Christ. Amen. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law that being dead wherein we were held that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Amen. Newness of spirit. Philippians chapter 3. Verse 10, Paul says that I may know him, Janosko, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. Amen. Blessed be his name, brothers and sisters. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. I don't think Paul believed he was going to escape the grave. But I believe he saw a victory beyond the grave. Amen? I believe Paul the Apostle, he saw that he was not going to stay in the grave, that there was a resurrection from the dead. But how many know that some of us, not all of us, are going to sleep? Some of us are going to be caught up to God and to his throne. And then, in the middle of the tribulation hour, there will be those that will be caught up in the middle of the air to meet the Lord in the middle of the air. Oh, listen, how sweet the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, brothers and sisters. Praise God. Romans chapter 8, verse 2. Now, I want to encourage you to read Romans chapter 6 through chapter 8. You will conceive the struggle that Paul himself, that Saul it became Paul the Apostle. You'll see his own struggle. 
and his fight of faith. Are you listening? You'll see how that he learns from Revelation how to live an overcoming life. You'll see how he struggles in chapter 6. He begins to gain knowledge and understanding chapter 7. But in chapter 8, he goes on in an overcoming life. God has revealed to him there's life in the Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Paul learned that if he continued to live in the flesh, he would die. But that if he mortified the deeds of the body, that if he wouldn't walk after the flesh, but he would walk after the Spirit, he would live. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 2, Paul says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Jesus said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. He whom the Son of Man shall make free shall be free indeed. Made free from the law of sin and death. Praise the Lord. What the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, not that the law is weak, but because of the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. You want to live in victory? Stop living after the flesh. Stop minding the things of the flesh. Amen, brothers and sisters. There is victory. There is victory in Jesus. There is victory over sin and the flesh. Praise the Lord. Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. Praise the Lord. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. If Christ be in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. If Christ be in you, he's speaking to believers. Just because you're saved doesn't mean Christ is in you. How many know there is positional righteousness, and then there's partation of righteousness. There's imputed righteousness, imparted righteousness. It's one thing to receive righteousness down to your account because of Christ and what he has done. It's another thing to receive imparted righteousness because of your works of righteousness, because of your obedience, because you are obeying the Father through Jesus Christ, doing always those things that please him, imparted righteousness. So many today settling for imputed righteousness. They have no idea about imparted, receiving his own righteousness, his own nature, his own divine nature. 
victory, brothers and sisters, if Christ be in you. Paul the Apostle was speaking to believers when he said that you would be strengthened in the inner man, that Christ might be in your hearts by faith, that he might dwell in your hearts by faith. But we need that strengthening on the inner man, brothers and sisters, and rooted and grounded in Christ to know the love of Christ. If you don't know the love of Christ, you'll never be willing to die to self. Because I'm going to tell you, the death to the self-life is just as real as if you died. Thank God the Lord doesn't do it all at once. Paul the Apostle said, I die daily. Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily. It's a daily dying to self. You have to keep that old man on the cross until he's dead. I remember my pastor said years ago, he said, just when you think you've killed that old man, he raises his old ugly head up. Just when you think you got him lit, just when you think you finally have got him dead, there he is again. You've resurrected him by feeding the flesh. Does anybody out there know what I'm talking about? Amen. Wouldn't it be wonderful to be able to kill this old man of sin once and for all? Well, God has made provision for that. Will everybody attain to it? No. Paul the Apostle was stretching for it. He was reaching for it. Amen. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And if Christ be in you, it's being taught today when you get saved, Christ is in you. No, he's not. No, he's not. Jesus said, if you keep my words, you obey my words, he said, I and the Father will come and take up our abode in you. That doesn't happen when you first get saved. When you first get saved, you're saved by faith, or through, uh, by grace through faith, and you're given righteousness down to your account. You're saved positionally in Christ. It's a whole nother thing to go on unto perfection. It's a whole nother thing to go through sanctification, be filled with the Holy Ghost, and go on to being glorified with Christ, raised up with him in his throne. If Christ be in you, if you've allowed Christ to come and take his throne in your heart, where he has subdued the old man of sin, where it total, totally his enemies now have become your enemies and you have allowed Christ in you to subdue. He won't do it by himself. He's going to work with you through the power of the Holy Ghost and subduing that old man of sin, subduing, that fallen nature. Amen. Until, until Christ is in you, seated in you, in his throne, ruling and reigning from your throne, from, from your heart. Amen. Praise the Lord. He said the kingdom does not come in observation. He said it's within you. Amen. You give him the reins of your heart. And he teaches you how to reign. Amen? He teaches you how to rule over your own spirit. Is anybody listening? He teaches you how to rule over your own spirit. He teaches you how to rule from the throne. How to live in him in his power, in his victory. Amen. He was tempted in all points. Think about that. Don't just 
run right over that quickly. He was tempted in all points, yet without sin. Oh, yeah. Don't, you, don't think you're, you're alone. He was tempted in all points, yet without sin. If Christ be in you, the overcomer himself, the conqueror himself, Christ, our victory, if he be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Does anybody know what Paul was talking about? But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Dear God, people, no wonder Paul said these light afflictions are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Amen? Praise God. How can you compare the sufferings of this life with the glory that shall be revealed in us? Christ in you, the hope of glory, totally free from sin. Amen? Praise God. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Amen. Life in the Spirit, folks. Life in the Spirit. Praise God. Victory. Victory, brothers and sisters. That's what Paul was talking about in Galatians chapter 2, verse 19. For I, through the law, am dead to the law that I might live unto God. Are you listening? Let these things sink down into your ears. For I, through the law, am dead to the law that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. Paul said, when I am weak, then am I strong. But when he was dealing with the cross and when he was identifying himself with Christ on the cross, he put it all there, didn't he? I am. We see a generation today, this antichrist generation. Jesus said they would come saying that they're Christ. I am Christ. Listen, the I am movement that's going on today, that's focusing on the young people. But Paul said, I am crucified. Paul didn't say, I am rich, increased with goods, and have need of nothing. Paul didn't say, I am rich. Amen. Paul didn't say, I am great. Paul didn't say, I am mighty. 
Amen. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. I'm dead. That's what he was saying. I'm dead with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. There's the victory. There it is right there. There's the overcoming life. Nevertheless, I live. Nevertheless, I live. Nevertheless, I live. Oh, hallelujah. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. If Christ be in you, is the living Christ in you? Paul said, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, in this body, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for for me. Free. Made free from sin. Made free from the law of sin and death. Made free from the law. Are you listening, people? No longer condemned. No longer under condemnation. Amen. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. Today they want to just quote the part. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. They want to stop right there. They don't want to finish They don't want to finish the conditions, the requirements to them that walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. See, that's the victory. That's the key. Life in the Spirit. Minding the things of the Spirit. If you mind the things of the flesh and the carnal life, you'll die. If you mind the things of the Spirit is life and peace, brothers and sisters. Very few of God's people enjoy the victory here on this earth. Very few walk in the Spirit and enjoy the blessing in this life. Amen? So many of God's people struggle with that old man of sin. They struggle with that old man of sin. Amen. The struggle's over. Amen. I am crucified with Christ. You got to reckon yourself dead under sin. You got to reckon. You got to recognize through faith. Let me tell you. It's not something man can do. None of us can do it. It's the work of the Spirit. The Holy Ghost. Only the Holy Ghost can perform this operation. This is an operation of faith. This is an operation in the Spirit. This is something that God does in the Spirit. It's a miracle to be crucified with Christ and to be raised with him in newness of life. And that doesn't happen through water baptism. Amen. That happens through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Sanctification in the fire of the Holy Ghost. This is an operation of the Spirit. Amen. John said, I indeed baptize you unto repentance. Amen. But there stands one among you who shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Praise the Lord. Freed. Made free from sin. 
Amen. I, I'm going to say this again. I'm not looking for the graveyard. I really am not looking for the graveyard. There's times I wish I was dead. Some of the suffering I've been through. But I've never been looking for the graveyard. In fact, that's been my prayer. God, I don't want to go the way of the grave. Look up. Look up, people. Oh, I feel his presence. Look up. Our redemption is drawing near. Or as it says in the Greek, our redemption has come. Amen. We're not waiting for him. He's waiting for us. He's waiting for us to look up fully, completely look up into his glorious face. Praise the Lord. Be changed, transformed as you behold the glory of the Lord in the face of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Caught up to God and to his throne. Amen. We shall not all sleep. We shall not all die. Amen. Pass from death unto life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Lord willing, we'll add another part to this but not sure where to go from here. Praise the Lord. Thought we might get a few, few segments into this because of the series, but praise the Lord. We may have possibly packed it all into the second part. This whole thing, brothers and sisters, is about an overcoming life. And it's so sad. There are so few, if any, so few ministers today teaching the overcoming life. Making excuses for sin. Whether it's because they don't understand it or because they love their sin. They'd rather stay in sin. There's something better than struggling with sin. And that is the victory over it. Amen. Jesus has taken the sting out of death. Blessed be his name. God bless you. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. Got the power in the name of the Lord. No Satan rages, we cannot be defeated. We've got the power.